Hello, friends, and welcome to World Build With Us, the podcast where we create fantastical worlds with help from you, our listeners. My name is Rob Hilferty. I'm here with my co-hosts, Daniel Quinn and Courtney Staples. On today's episode, a long-time listener and patron, One Blue Axe, has a brand new prompt for us that we're going to dive right into. But before we do, I want to remind everyone that if you want us to build your world, you can always go to our website where you can click a link, follow the instructions, and within a reasonable amount of time, we'll be building your world. We're also on YouTube now, so if you want to go over there, click all the YouTube things like there's a bell and a like button and maybe a subscribe. You can do all those as well. We're still on Twitter at Let's World Build. We've got a Discord if you want to come and chat with us more directly, where we like to talk about all sorts of things, most of them world building related. Uh, not all, though. If you want to come chat with us about other stuff, that's fine, too. And, of course, if you, like Gluax, are incredibly generous and want to give us money or support us in any way, go to our Patreon, where you get access to sweet, sweet patron-only goodies, including two episode lengths for each prompt, which Gluax is going to cash in on here, among other good things like Too Hot for Broadcast and The Aphid Lounge, which are patron-exclusive either full-on podcasts or bits of podcasts that we had to cut for, oh, all sorts of reasons. But um, with all that out the way, let's go ahead and dive right into this episode, which uh, I've had this theory now for quite a while that um, Gluax has been Courtney this entire time. And this prompt, <laughs> this prompt does not help Courtney's case here, right? Because the prompt is this, welcome to a world of magic. Well, kind of. Magic does exist in this world, but it can only be wielded by children and has some odd side effects. Tenet one, magic exists in some form. However, it can only be used by children, specifically from the moment they're born until they hit puberty, upon which they lose all magic. Furthermore, until they lose their magic, they are not considered human and are therefore not protected by laws. Gluax then wrote, smiley face <laughs> I, I do feel like that is a very important part of that uh, ton of <laughs> <laughs> i agree i like the smiley face the most yeah the smiley yeah. face does add a little bit of flavor to it mm -hmm. now again courtney i'm going to let you defend yourself here as to why you would write this incredibly specific prompt for yourself but uh -huh. let's get on to the other tenets first tenet number two <laughs> magic wielders cannot communicate in any linguistic fashion with those that are also not children so adults i would imagine any normal language they would speak or write becomes nothing but gibberish to the non-magical. They can still understand and read languages that are not magical. Lastly, there is a world war going on, and the armies consist, of course, of these children. So, Courtney, um, again, mm -hmm. you don't have to create a whole pseudonym you don't have to create a years long patron and like run a sock puppet account just to submit your prompts onto the podcast. You can literally just tell us like, Hey, I want to submit a prompt. We would do that for you, Courtney. We would actually do that for you. So like defend yourself as to why this hyper specific prompt is directed at you specifically. No, no, I swear. It's, it's definitely not me. Gluax and I are very separate people. We live in different parts of the country. I swear. Mm -hmm. Totally no collusion whatsoever on this. Which which I find particularly interesting as well, because I'm realizing that Gluax uh, used to stream on Twitch. So you also created a lifelike <laughs> realistic rig of like a different person that you also acted out, which is like, it seems like a lot of effort. You can literally just come to us about this kind of thing, Courtney. And of course, because this prompt is directly pointed in your direction i mm -hmm. feel it only makes sense that you start us off with your first tenet i mean you already gave us three but like what is your <laughs> as courtney what is your first tenet yes yes as courtney my first tenet is that the <laughs> is that the children are able to do magic because they can see a broader range on the light spectrum and are somehow able to control what they see uh, most kids are attuned to specific parts of the spectrum, but there are rare ones who can actually see and interact with the entire thing. And this could also relate to the communication issues uh, touched upon in the prompts. Like if a kid writes or draws something partly using colors that adults literally can't see, uh, of course, the adults will think it's gibberish. Mm. Interesting. Okay. 
that's uh that's going to be really interesting when it comes to how I've kind of grokked with the magical thing too. But mm-hmm. so, okay, so you're obviously basing this in some kind of a reality here, right? Where like children in real life see a wider like spectrum of color. That's what you're suggesting here, right? Um, doesn't necessarily have to be based in reality, just in some some universe where the mm-hmm. spectrum of light exists and adults can't see all of it. Gotcha. Okay. And to add on to that question, is it just the spectrum of light that they're able to see? Like, is there something attached to that that allows some kind of like, uh, like magical nonsense that happens? Like maybe like the spectrum of light that they're allowed to see makes them see like runes or glyphs that might not be there. Did you have anything in mind when it comes to that? Nothing specific. Like we can certainly build it out that way. But I was thinking like if, um, if for example, kids can see and interact with certain types of radiation then they could manipulate that to their desire and mm, make things mm. explode or do whatever with it. Gotcha. Okay. What I like about that thematically is it um, points to what we think of children as, as um, because of their kind of ignorance, they're able to look at things in a different light than we do. So mm-hmm. it's like, this is a literal, you know, manifestation of that. Yeah. Yeah, I was partly inspired by uh, when we were playing the Dungeons and Flagons session the other night, and I cast Ultra Vision on myself, which let me <laughs> see guess. see every spectrum of light, mm. so I could see invisible people, the invisible time travelers. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say Ultra Vision, but then I'm like, let me just go with the childlike uh, ignorance. <laughs> um, I mean, both both work. Yeah. Great. Wait, okay, you have invisible time travel. Are those just the Tommy knockers from that Stephen King book slash movie? Isn't that oh, what they are? I don't know what that is, but the time travelers were just invisible so that nobody would see them and create a paradox. <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely, I'm pretty sure that that's is almost that what it is? from Tommy knockers. Yeah, oh, really? absolutely. Yeah, I've never yeah. seen that as a Stephen King novel, is it? It's also a movie which is like, okay, it has terrible CG and like the monsters are like big meatballs that eat the universe. Or are they evil? <laughs> oh, is that the ones on the plane? Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, they were time travel? I know they traveled, they were eating time backwards, right? Yeah, I'm pretty, something. yeah, they eat time or something like that. Yeah. These guys were just like regular people who were time traveling. <laughs> so they weren't big meatballs then? No, they okay. were just well, normal people. <laughs> frankly, that's disappointing. <laughs> was it a movie or a show that it was made into? I okay. So I think I know I'm that. Pretty movie. sure it's a mini series. Is it start with uh, an L okay. or something? Is it the Langoliers? Oh, maybe that's what I'm getting. I think you're thinking of the Langoliers. With. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I, yeah. Okay, but come on, they're two nonsense words: the Tommy Knockers and the Langoliers. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> What's Tommy Knockers? Hey, looking at Langoliers now, those are big weird meatball things. What's the those are like the last good thing is. That was a really interesting. Um, it was, I think, it was a either it was a movie or a miniseries. It was very interesting. Yeah, I can't, I can't remember. I think it was also Stephen King too, like the yeah. mm. Well, you know, you know what Stephen King is really interested in thematically is putting children in danger, and yeah, you know what we're true. doing here is exactly that. So, Daniel, why don't you hit us with your first tenet and tell us how we're putting these children in the <laughs> mouths of meatball monsters here? <laughs> Well, I was thinking about how they're used in war, as it says in the prompt, um, the children. Um, And so I was thinking, well, how could that be? In what way? And so piggybacking on the question of how their magic functions, my prompt says, the magic the children possess allows them to control ancient machines that are used in the war. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So clearly it has nothing to do with their vision then. (laughs) Yeah. Are you picturing like mechs or just guns or any sort of weapon? I was picturing Magitech, like Final Fantasy. Yeah, yeah. Was that what you were thinking too? Really? Yeah, like that intro mm. sequence from Final Fantasy VI. Yes, totally. totally. Yeah. yeah, and like Espers. I was thinking like, because you mm. know in Final Fantasy, what's her name? The Esper character. Uh, Tara. She's kind of childlike, right? That's what yeah. I was kind of envisioning that. It's so interesting that we're all taking this focus on the magic itself in different ways. And we're going to have to like mash these all together in some way Mm -hmm. because my my first tenet also has to do with magic in that the magic itself is based in the manipulation of time in some way uh Mm -hmm. so they're they're chronomancers and the way that i'm kind of grokking this is that like the further you get from the source of creation aka your birth the more tenuous your connection to chronomagic tends to work so Uh 
Okay. You, you're only potent for a certain number of like years before mm-hmm. your magic just goes away, right? Because Gluax said that, like, again, air quotes Gluax, uh, said that we can, like, like it's it's around puberty, but, like, I really yeah. don't want, like, hormones to be the reason that... The genetic, like, magic, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So I think that if we kind of focus on this, where it's, like, it's literally, like, you get further away from time, you get weaker yeah. from the source of your magic. That's like, cool, because, like, the distance yeah. from your creation is more exactly. mystical. You know what I mean? Like, the moment right. of the creation of your consciousness or whatever that way we can get away from the typical interpretation like you're saying which is like uh, genetic based you know? yes yeah I- exactly mm-hmm. and and what i'm really fascinated to see is that like okay if if i'm focused on chronomancy or like time magic right and you're able to see things on a different spectrum and that somehow allows you to manipulate or use like ancient machines like I love that we have to now like cobble together a reason why this all works. And I already know that whatever we come up with is going to be fucking cool. So <laughs> I'm like, I'm really curious to see how we like combine these three things together. What, what do y'all think? Um, I do have one question. Go for it. Maybe I'm misunderstanding the coronamancy magic. Are you saying like the older you get the greater the time? The weaker you Okay. Right. Oh, I thought you were talking about like literal distance. Oh, physical. Di- no, no, yeah. no. Okay. I, I mean, like okay. the the further away you get from your time of birth. I gotcha. Yeah. yeah. I oh, gotcha. yeah. I see the. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's like I was born in this hospital. I will die. In this <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I, I heard place. So I was like, wait, how's that going? Right. Yeah. yeah. It's like the older you get, the more you lose your power because okay. you're further away from your birth. Exactly. Yeah. I see. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Which is the source of the power in the way that I'm kind of grokking it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, does that mean like newborn babies are the most the most yes, powerful it does. beings? Yes, it does, Courtney. <laughs> right, in terms right. of like how they manipulate time, yes. Which I think is like, man, that's incredibly wild. Baby batteries. No, Daniel. Yeah, no. That's obvious. They're, they're not people. <laughs> they're things oh he owned, as the prompt says. Okay, actually, actually, you're not even wrong there. But <laughs> yeah. like, okay, again, before we move on to our second <laughs> tenets, I truly feel like we need to like figure unless some of your tenants kind of help us with this i think that we should spend some time now to figure out how this magic comes together because again courtney we see spectrums daniel allows for the manipulation of ancient machines or magic machines right Mm -hmm. and mine has to do with the manipulation of time how do we combine those together into one beautiful smoothie or sandwich or parfait that is all working together I don't know if they're incompatible at all. Yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. I want, but I want to know how they yeah. work. I, I feel like I would rather know what the other tenants are only because they might suggest how they mm. connect. Like, I think, okay. I think they do. They're like puzzle pieces right now and they, they will fit. I'm just not sure. And I don't want to preemptively like go there only because I don't know what crazy stuff you guys might add that will make it work, you know? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm okay with that. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I do feel the same anticipation that you do that. I think it's gonna be it's yeah. gonna work, you know. Yeah, I, I think me you you know what, Daniel? I think I'm just trying to skip yeah. ahead to the part that I'm really excited. excited about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I think you're absolutely correct about that. So yes. Okay, sure. Let's move on then. Courtney, what do you got for your second tenant? Uh, my second one is that because of the immense amount of danger involved in dealing with magical babies who we've now established are like ultra powerful and then, you know, magical screaming toddlers, uh, the role of child rearing is treated with great respect and is only done by the bravest of individuals. Oh, boy. OK, wow. That is ooh, that's might be too fictitious for me to understand here. For <laughs> me. Um, less believable than time, baby. Honestly, if we're going there, <laughs> of course, of course, I joke. I, I'm just, you know, suggesting that maybe we should respect people who take care of children more in our mm. current situation and world. Mm. But anyway, uh, that's really interesting because now I'm imagining that, like, wouldn't that mean that these are also children themselves? Like maybe the eldest children have to take care of the babies and stuff like that. Cause they can talk to them still. Yeah. That's what I had in mind. Like as mm. you get older, you kind of become responsible for raising the next generation below you. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. but also, you know, you run into issues there of having like 13 year olds raising infants and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. 
I, I, the one thing I would note is that the prompt says they can't communicate linguistically specifically. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's impossible to communicate with the children because, for example, no, if yeah. someone you know can't communicate with you linguistically, but and it says in the prompt that they can understand our language, then you could have a mother who can communicate with a child. It's just more difficult because mm-hmm. right, you have to right. like decide body language or emotionally how you're going to talk to each other Mm. and then the other thing that it it adds which i think is interesting from like a reification point of view is that you know like the the interplay between mother and child like it's this it's this struggle because you don't understand the thing when it's born and you have to like get used to you know what it wants and interpret what it wants and that's like part of life right for the mother that's what Mm. makes it so stressful and this is like reflecting that in a magical way which i think is really neat yeah Mm. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, there's there's a couple of things that I'm kind of interested in when we talk about this, Daniel, right? Like, so I'm assuming that sign language is out, right? Like that that method it's of communication. Kind of right, yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Exactly, right. So so that's kind of what I'm thinking. How do we feel about charades? Like how good do you have to be at charades <laughs> to be able to communicate with these people? Yeah, I feel like basic signs like pointing mm-hmm. or making sort of shapes with your hands like that would be okay it's just like when it gets to the point of being a a known language is when it falls apart yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and you know like even when you can't communicate with someone there's ways where you can express your emotional state to them right and then mm-hmm. i think oh, absolutely. that's probably what happens with children although going back to what you guys were saying about like who is this the, the quote-unquote mother i bet there's like levels right so there's probably like elder children who serve a role and then there's probably mothers who are probably outside of maybe they're attached mm. to the governments that have these wars. But I imagine mm. there might be some tension between those two kind of supervisors of children, mm. yeah. like the mm. children who actually speak the language and who are teenagers or preteens. Right. They might be less inclined to cooperate with the actual adult mothers, you know. Yeah. Or there's like resentment mm. from mm-hmm. the mothers towards those uh teens yeah because they can understand Mm. the kids but the parents themselves cannot exactly yeah and then and then of course it's like how dangerous is it to be a mother or to be Mm -hmm. a mothering figure in that world where like at any time a baby could have a tantrum and then like maybe literally tear time apart in some way you know what i mean like (laughs) there's got to be this weird kind of like emotionally distant subsect of people who are like i don't want to put myself at risk you know, or something like that. And all of a sudden, like those babies are craved of human attention and starved for like touch, which, Mm -hmm. you know, like is very important for the development of children in general. Right. So I I'm also imagining like, there's gotta be some fucked up government. That's like, put those babies in a tube. And like, (laughs) that's their version of child rearing. It's like those infants are too powerful. And then what's the name? Do Do you all know that experiment that like they never did because it was so unethical of like, they wanted um, to take a child and then like put it in a box and then give it just the bare minimum of like food and water and stuff like that to have it live until it became an adult. Do you know what I'm talking about? Well, didn't they basically do that with monkeys and they found out that it was just, it absolutely destroyed them. The uh, Harlow uh, monkey experiments. It, it was not a monkey being experimented on. It was a hypothetical okay. That was like never done because of how disgustingly unethical it was, right? Uh, yeah. It was it was even a Simpsons joke at some point by like a psychiatrist. He's like, like his proposal for what they want to do with like a million dollars or something like that. I can't remember what it was, but but yeah, that's I imagine that there's got to be some government in this world that does something similar where it's like uh, maybe it doesn't destroy them, but like right before they're about to be destroyed, they're like, all right, you're just like a cold, emotionless child soldier. Perfect. That's what we wanted this whole time. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case for most of the world, because the prompt Mm -hmm. says that the children are treated as property and there's this world war. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's because of the world war, but it seems to be that um, children are instruments. Yeah. (laughs) Right. I think it would be a situation where each child does not have their own like mother figure or parent figure. Like they would be raised in a group environment by like one or two overseer types who kind of keep track of everything, but definitely not in like how we would imagine child mm. rearing. And like, it's also like, we don't necessarily need to go with humans as the species here that we're dealing with. We could do something mm. else too. Yeah. But come on, come on. Humans are cool. 
<laughs> yeah, I thought about that initially too. Like, are the children even human? You know, it was the first question. Mm -hmm. Um, the reason why I'd probably lean towards human is only because it creates more, um, it makes it more, more uncomfortable and dangerous, like conceptually, yeah. cause if they're oh, not, yeah. yeah, like if they're not our children, then who cares if we treat them like objects, right? Like mm -hmm. it's easier for us mm -hmm. to do that as opposed to if they are our own children, then, you know, what are you, there was moral questions obviously that get raised. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah oh, man, this this is this world is already so fucking cool. I'm so into this already. Uh, but let's pivot over, Daniel. I would I would really like for you to go this time because my um so so my second tenet is a little bit out there on purpose. So I wanna I wanna know what you have in mind, Daniel, for your second tenet first. Part of my tenet reinforced what Courtney was saying. The end of it was, as a result, the mothers are well-protected resources. So mm. that's in there. But the tenet says um, the population is largely sterile due to the effects of the war. Mm. But strangely, these effects have also extended their lifespan significantly. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, interesting. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great scarcity for these children. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. Yeah. And, and the children themselves are like valuable resources. You know? Right. Yeah. And I, I thought... On top of their being sterile, for whatever reason, if they're living a lot longer, they're even more scarce, right? So exactly, you know, yeah. you know mm -hmm. a, a need to replace the population. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, mm -hmm. and potentially the idea that the war being long lasting is being carried by people who are still alive, like politicians who have lived a long time. Mm. Yeah, which doesn't happen in our <laughs> world at, all. at all. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, do, do you guys remember Strom Thurmond? You remember him, right? Mm. Yeah, he was like 90 something when he finally died in office. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. like some yeah. of those people we have now who should not oh, they start yeah. glitching because they're so old. Yeah, like Feinstein, for example, uh, just toss yeah. the name out there. Yeah, McConnell. That one. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. McConnell. Yeah, we got, a co we got a couple of men. Seems like we really need to set an age limit for the fucking government. Weird, yeah. Uh, should, should it's be wild. Like something like that. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> It seems like those in power tend to maintain power, which means that they skew towards an older audience's wants, needs, etc. So that's it doesn't mm -hmm. seem very representative when you really break it down like that. Now, does it, Courtney? That's mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's mm -hmm. interesting. Hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. It almost sounds like and this is my segue. Watch this shit. It almost sounds like we have a giant secretive ghost council that is opposing humanity in some way, which is, in fact, my tenet uh again mine's it's it's kind of left field but i'm like i want a big cabal of a supernatural creature and because i've been getting more into magic the gathering again recently one of my favorite factions in ravnica are the orzov which is mm -hmm. an orzov syndicate and they were up until a couple of sets ago run by a giant ghost council that was infinitely corrupt because of their immortality and uh, I want to take that concept and say, like, hey, we've got a cabal of ghosts that are behind a lot of the political machinations that are happening in this world. Whether that be every country has a ghost council behind it or whether it's an Illuminati situation where each, you know, like individual country has one person that they're all part of the Illuminati, whatever. I haven't figured that part out, but I'm interested in talking about this supernatural kind of force behind the powers of the nations at large. I like it. Mm -hmm. So you said there was some kind of like monster behind this ghost council, or do you mean ghost council in a figurative sense? No, no. In a literal, they are spirits the ghost, and or right? ghosts. Right. Okay. And so uh, that is the monster. Oh, they are the monster, like the ghosts. Yes, oh, exactly. Okay, got it. Yeah. I think there's a connection to be had between them and these ancient machines. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I like that. Because, you know, when you said that Illuminati, that makes me think, oh, we've got like this, what's the word for geronto gerontocracy, old people ruling kind of deal. <laughs> um, like that connects to ghosts, right? So I don't know, like maybe they're behind the really old politicians or they're among them. I don't know. I think there's a connection between that, this ongoing endless wars and the machines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know why, but I'm imagining one of these ghosts like doing a soliloquy talking about how when they were younger, they used to be able to like remembering everything throughout their life, including like seeing the spectrum of magic for the first time. And then like them going through and becoming more and more bitter until they're a ghost or something like that. I don't know. That's what popped into my brain. But 
The other thing that we have to kind of have to figure out here, right, is how do they become ghosts, right? Like how do how how is ghost form in this world, right? Um, mm. And I, I imagine that like it has something to do with either machines or with the chronomancy or all everything all together. But yeah, there's a lot here. Um, first off, I feel like I should have used the term electromagnetic spectrum earlier, not light spectrum to be more definitive about my prompt. But with how ghosts are formed, I'm wondering if like they figured out in some way how to manipulate their chronomancy in such a way that they retained their ability to see everything across the spectrum and that in some way like separated them from their physical form and i bet the children can see them too because they can see yeah 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 oh so they like literally they find a way to physically separate their like Mm -hmm. spirit from their body so their body continues to rot and die right or get older but like the spirit form of them is like consistently vibrating in a certain way right or even just fully separate from their bodies like they are ghostly entities like Mm. their their body is just a corpse somewhere okay so does that mean that these are ghost children uh yeah they could be ghost kids ghost teenagers yeah yeah i kind of like the parallel though like them having an opposite kind of um representation like being old Mm -hmm. or old aligned although they could be i mean we could split the difference they could be if we can somehow get to they are actually old people but they're still in their child form that might be interesting oh and only the kids can see the fact that they are like Mm -hmm. child ghosts that's that's exactly what i wanted yeah no or older ghosts or something yeah whichever way we want to do it yeah. So do they look young but are old or I think they should be old but they're actually young. No, that that's exactly what I wanted okay. because the okay. imagery in my head is like I, I'm thinking of like vampire fiction where it's like, you know, you have a, a vampire who is turned as a child, but he's actually like 50 or 60 years old or however. Mm-hmm. And how much that dissonance that's created is really creepy and unsettling, right? Because it's like mm-hmm. talking about smoking cigars and like banging broads and stuff like that. Like that should not be. And so like mm-hmm. that's where kind of the part of the unsettling nature comes from. I want that but from a ghost child, like a, a young looking person who is actually hundreds of years old. Or well, are we saying the inverse though? We're saying yeah. they're physically old, but they actually have a child like ghost is what it is. Like I'm open to either way. I just want to make mm-hmm. sure we decide. I like flipping it because we've seen before the the child vampire is actually sure. 100 years old. But if we do what you're saying and flip it, now we have a gerontocracy that's actually secretly ruled by children. <laughs> yeah. And then the children who could actually see them. I don't know what they're up to, but they seem to be mm. children who grew up but also didn't grow up. You know, yeah. that, it could possibly be the worst thing you could have. <laughs> oh, maybe maybe it's kind of like an accelerated decay of physical form, mm-hmm. but it allows them to maintain like their, their magic in some way. Right. Yeah. So it's it's almost like it's almost like a lichdom situation, right? right. It's like, yeah. Like, yeah. Nice the physical body. Inverted lich. <laughs> <laughs> we invented an inverted lich of some sort. Kind of. Kind yeah. of. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wild interesting time <laughs> magic all this stuff okay cool yeah let's let's combine it all we, we've got wait have we gone through all this yes we have gone through all the tenets mm-hmm. so now it's time to make sure that it blends smoothly right and again i was excited before i'm maintaining that excitement what are we thinking about in terms of how this magic all comes together how is it represented what does it do how does it work let's figure that out i think that's where we should go next Um, I was looking up whether there are time particles basically to kind of blend your tenant and mine, Rob, like mine about the electromagnetic spectrum and yours about chronomancy. And we could work with tachyons potentially. Yay, tachyon. (laughs) Daniel's favorite thing. I was going to say, yeah, Daniel's going to be excited (laughs) about that. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Tachyons, um, unless you would like to explain. um... No, go go for it. (laughs) Well, hold on. I would like to step in. It's definitely probably one of my favorite songs by Death Grips. But I don't I mean, like, it's it's definitely up there, you know, especially off of that album. But Mm -hmm. uh, oh, you mean scientific? Sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Daniel. Yeah, you explain what tachyons are. Tachyons are theoretical particles that always travel faster than light. And so they travel backwards in time. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, um, okay. It's impossible to theoretically interact with them because it's not that they're accelerating too faster than light. It's that they start faster than light and as a consequence, go backwards in time, which I think mm-hmm. is perfect conceptually for what we're trying to do. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Like Tachyon sound like the the source of these kind of reverse lich children ghost things. They seem to be tachyonic in some way. <laughs> exactly. right. yeah, 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 yeah. Like I'm imagining that they're probably like the kids that I referenced who could potentially see the entire spectrum. Mm. Um, so mm-hmm. they have control over more things, whereas like, you know, some random kid might have control over certain like radioactive waves or something. But these ones can deal with everything, including the tachyons. I mean, there's a whole array of abilities that you can, you know, play with yeah. based on that. Yeah. Um, I guess, like, while that is certainly interesting, I think that's something that will come out of what we're trying to figure out. There's the bigger questions we have to deal with, though, are um, all of the things to piece together. So, because <laughs> we've got, yeah. we've got oh, yeah. a uh, gerontocracy of child ghost liches. Okay, that yeah. appear to be old. <laughs> they appear yeah. old, but they're actually ghost childs that have extended their powers past their adolescence, right? We have children who um, have these powers because the further they get from their birth, the more it diminishes. Once they hit adolescence, it goes away, right? And we have a world war that's happening that uses mm-hmm. these children. The children are able to see things that others can't, as well as the ghost people. Um, and it allows them to control these ancient machines. And I think the other piece was the population is sterile. Um, mothers mm-hmm. are rare and respected. Um, mm-hmm. And I also said that human lifespans are really long. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So every, I, don't, I think I missed a couple of tenants, but. I think that's pretty much no, it. I think that's right. But yeah, we haven't really touched on like what the war is. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. That's kind of a big one that we yeah. should really talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's I don't know, it's it, with extended lifespans um, and all this talk of time. You know, we can we can reach for climate related stuff. We can reach for our own physiology, aging, mm-hmm. and things mm-hmm. that people are concerned with. Um, and these mm-hmm. machines, I think, are at the heart of it. Yeah, like w- let's talk more about the machines as well. Like mm-hmm. when you picture ancient machines, like what are we looking at? We're not going back to blood mecca. Right. So like mm-hmm. when you picture like ancient machines, you brought up Final Fantasy Six and Terra yeah. and like the mecha suits mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Is that what you had in mind or did you have some other expression of ancient machine that you were more interested in? It doesn't have to be literally that. But one of the things I liked about some of the drawings of those is that they've got like these weird magical gems in them. And they're mm-hmm. like um, they're not all mechanical. Like they seem to be like partly mystical in their structure, mm. at least in the drawings of them. Mm-hmm. So I, I want to get away from mechs because we've done that and we know what that is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or yeah. you get inside of a mech and you pilot it. Like maybe it's not that, but it seems that kids can see something in them or maybe they communicate mm. with it. I don't know. Like it seems like it's an instrument of the kids in some way. Mm. Um, yeah. And I've also seen them as esper you know? <laughs> if, we're, if we're going with like a gems and crystals route, that could be like literal crystallized time in some mm. way like that they're able to manipulate mm. right mm-hmm. like that yeah that that might be interesting in tachyonic that crystals yeah there you that's go cool. exactly yeah. yeah 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 and maybe they emanate tachyonic particles and so like i guess in sci-fi a lot of the uses of tachyonic stuff is a to go faster than light and obviously to do stuff with time travel those are usually the two main uses of it just mm-hmm. so throwing that mm-hmm. out there. what if um what if these weapons are like the most powerful forms of these weapons they basically like shoot tachyonic bullets in a way but the person you shot is locked in time so maybe uh, that's how this war is being fought you're not even like killing the other side you're mm, just locking them permanently them Ooh. yeah i could also see i could also see on top of that, i've seen i'm picturing like stasis bombs right yeah, but i could also yeah. picture like the radiation from the tachyonic or mm-hmm. that maybe it's pelted this earth perhaps as a consequence of creating these weapons maybe that's what created the children's powers like the radiation mm. of it. So like the radiation gave rise to these children and the magic. Mm. Yeah. I like that. So that the weapons precede the children is what I'm suggesting. Mm. So like the weapons came from elsewhere or were developed and mm. then used and whoops, we didn't mean for this to happen. Yeah. And it's like yeah. the radiation gave people longevity, but also made them sterile, but then gave yeah. rise to these children that have the power were they were they in fact developed by the very same children 
like creating a paradox effect. Oh, you mean the mm-hmm. ghost children? Like, yeah, because they travel backwards in time because they're tachyonic. Like, right. set this up for some purpose. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the so again, you're fucking with time. It's a time paradox, and you have a paradoxical neat. ghost council. Also, um, I'm just imagining that like uh, I'm moving away more from ghosts and more towards liches because I can't mm-hmm. help but think that like a tachyonic heart of a phylactery. Oh yeah. Bridges, right? yeah, it's like a crystal. Yeah, yeah. And it's like it's like their literal heart. Like I'm imagining it. Like you know, it's got like uh like steampunky looking aesthetics, but with like mm-hmm. crystals, and it's like in their chest or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm picturing kind of like you could run this, and God forbid, I suggest an anime, but you could run this as a more <laughs> serious, more serious one, right? Like kind of a Ghost in the Shell, like Akira esque yeah. kind of feel. Where mm. it's like not grotesque, but it's got this kind of like deep state kind of mystery feel to it. Mm. I'm also reminded of uh, a recent, not recent at this point, but recent enough Gundam series called Iron Blooded Orphans, oh. which is literally all about child soldiers and like mm. their like escape from a colony and stuff like that to form their own mercenary band. And they're like literal teenagers, but. One of the things that I think Gundam Wing does really well is I kind of tackle the idea of ongoing constant war and what that inevitably means for children in that setting in that the enemy will eventually use children to fight against you. Right. And Mm -hmm. I think that we're kind of already there in this setting by necessity. Right. Yeah, I think that's kind of the feel. Because, I mean, yeah. we didn't talk about when these children are actually used in the warring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not yet, which is probably not nice. <laughs> probably. Right. Especially because they're also fighting against other children, right? Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Even, if, even if one conception of this was like, oh, the children pilot the machines like drones or whatever, there's still the psychological trauma of destroying the uh, drones of the other children if, if they were not right. physically present. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's also like I'm picturing we talked about like the stasis guns or stasis bombs, just like yeah. battlefields of kids who are just locked mm-hmm. in place and just oh. there. Can and, we like, make that- it more horrifying, actually? Can we make them like melee weapons so you have to stab people with the time knife? So that way it's like <laughs> you literally like look at people in their fucking faces rather than just shooting them with bullets. You can have both. You could have yeah, oh, could sure. machines yeah. equipped yeah. with these blades and they got to do deeper attacks. And then you can also have like time bombs that get dropped oh yeah time bomb. Uh, uh. <laughs> there's also um like thinking about it and how the this council of ghost old people children have immense control over the tachyons like maybe they do have the power to um unstasis unfreeze the mm. ones who are locked of course they would just be continuing to use the child soldiers for war kidnap them mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Or maybe they're they're like kidnapping them and using them as a necessary power source for their own, you know, like needs, Electric right? Batteries of kids. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so actually that, that would make more sense as to why they've thrown the world into conflict is that they just need a constant supply in order to continue to survive. Oh, right? to sustain yeah. their own presence. Because they're always yeah. they're always mm-hmm. proceeding into the past. And so right. Right. Maybe the children moving into the future, the children of the future. So they have to pull their, <laughs> <laughs> use their powers to stay in their present. I do believe that children are our future. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it goes back to the infant batteries, like I was saying. Yep. Yeah. Yep. He yeah, called it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Got us there. Damn. Very <laughs> prescient, Daniel. It's almost like you time traveled <laughs> to the end of the episode and figured uh-huh. it out. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely a geriatric lich ghost tacky on from the future oh, okay yeah. absolutely the, one of the longest running jokes in the podcast is your status as an ancient mummy so like yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely we didn't we did know it was a tachyonic mummy <laughs> yeah exactly yeah we're just adding it all we're tacking that <laughs> additional adjective on at this point um okay well this this world is a fucking hellscape i'm into mm-hmm. it <laughs> so so i think it's time that we do our recap because i feel like we're at a pretty good place with everything right yeah i think so Awesome. So, Courtney, you started us off. What was your first tenet? Yep, that was that uh, kids are able to do magic because they can see and manipulate a broader range on the light or electromagnetic spectrum. Mm. And typically kids are attuned to certain parts of the spectrum, but there are some that can interact with everything on it that are much more powerful. 
Um, and then that could also relate to the communication issues. Like if they're writing a language down in a different part of the spectrum that adults can't see, then adults obviously can't understand it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and how do you feel we've integrated this into the current setting? Is that good? Is that how it works thus far? I think it works. I think it could be expanded upon with like potentially going more into like the different types of magic that are across mm. the spectrum. Um, but I like where we're going with it. I agree with you completely. But in order for us to do that system a little bit more justice, I feel like we need to do a little bit more research into that electromagnetic spectrum. Yeah, yeah I'd be down for that. Okay. And another cool. another way to view it too is from a tactical perspective, um, because like one of the things we're thinking of by default, because we said the word magic, is that we think of like powers, right? Mm -hmm. But another way to view this, this is a highly, um, let's assume this is like a highly near future kind of setting. Mm -hmm. Then the fact that they have this incredible vision could mean that they're incredible in in combat, in in war, and in, mm -hmm. and in strategic engagement yeah, because they true. see so much more than than our instruments could right so that's one right. way to look at it if we didn't want to have to deal with like fireballs and lightning bolts yeah. you know <laughs> yeah i see what you mean like they can sense um the presence of other people far before yeah. you know anyone oh, else could, or... like press in a prestian sort of way because they're espers yeah. they're literally espers right yep. or like they could see quote unquote see a bullet flying through the air before the bullet's mm -hmm. actually in the yeah. air they can just see yeah. like the energies related to it Oh, yeah, man. there can be different gradations and baselines for that, right? And I think that's where we can integrate part of it. But I mean, there's so much that you can do with that too, right? Like not mm -hmm. just the presidents, but like, you know, like one of the one of the greatest hacks of all time in terms of like, you know, like a first person shooter is the wall hack. I can see mm -hmm. through the walls to see outlines of my opponents, right? So like there's there's tons of tactical applications, like Daniel is saying. But I think that we should kind of explore options in terms of what we can do to mess around with that because it's so much fucking mm -hmm. fun, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agreed. That sounds dope. Very excited to see how that kind of plays out. Uh, Daniel, I believe you went next for the first tenant. Is that correct? I was talking about it allows them to control the machines. Right, right. And you're, you're feeling satisfied thus far? It seems like um, it may very well be that the machines aren't some sort of pre-existing thing it seems they might be the technology developed in this war and it might be the case because it, it seems like we're talking about these tachyonic crystals as being a resource that was used mm. to start this so it makes me wonder if could this be like a war that's been going on for so long no one really knows where it started mm -hmm. and perhaps mm -hmm. like the machines and you know sentence casing like they're the implements of war and the children have always known how to control them because of, mm. you know, or they, I guess they, they were the implements of war until they realized the children could be used for them. Oh, right. Okay. Cause we were saying the children kind of came about as a result of the war. Sort of. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, quick question. I, I never finished it, but isn't that kind of what Dahlgren's about? Like a war that's been going on for so long. I, am I, or am I misremembering that? Who even knows what tall grams about? <laughs> okay, you know, fair. Absolutely, yeah, fair. I, I haven't heard that one, but I've heard it's it's a beast. Oh my to god! Get <laughs> I was also wondering. I haven't read it or seen the movie, but is this at all similar to Ender's Game? Because I know it's like about kids who are being trained There's for war or something. For sure. yeah. Yeah. Way less homophobia, though, from my understanding. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what I would like to say about Dahlgren, because I haven't read the entirety of Dahlgren, but what I, what I will say was supposedly the, the interesting trick about it is how, it, I guess, it starts and ends as a continuous sort of loop, which is part uh, of the trick of it. But it's, like, very difficult to read. <laughs> like, that's the yeah. problem with Dahlgren. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's like when I read uh, Blood Meridian for the first two times <laughs> and I couldn't get through it. And then on the third read through, I'm like, this is one of my favorite books. Holy shit. You know, like, it's one of those things. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, my first tenet, uh, the source of magic is time. And the, the way that magic works is there's some manipulation of time in some sense. And the older you get, the further you get from the source of your power, which is literally like your birth and your creation. And so that's why there's a, a diminishing return on magical power as you get older. Mm -hmm. That was key, I think, to this whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. I'm I'm very happy with that kind of tenet because it's worked mm -hmm. itself throughout like several parts of this. So yeah, I'm excited. It's like mm -hmm. our fulcrum. Like I think everything kind of hinges on that, and it makes the magic very flexible. Um, mm -hmm. So I really like that one. Yeah. 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 Cool. Uh, Courtney, second tenet. Let's go. 
Um, that was that because of the danger uh, involved in handling and raising magical babies and toddlers having horrible magic tantrums. The role of child rearing is treated with respect and uh, only very brave individuals do that. And we talked about how mm -hmm. that's probably relegated to like preteens and teens who are tasked with taking care of mm -hmm. the younger generation because they actually can see and have some amount of control over the same mm. things that the younger kids do. Yeah. I see you can say otherwise. I feel like we haven't really talked enough about this aspect of the world, mm -hmm. right? Like if it's going to be a major tenet, I feel like we should talk about it a little bit more and give it a little bit more spice or a little bit more emphasis in some ways. I don't know. What do y'all think? Yeah. Um, I don't know if we need to do that now or if we could, if that's something that could, come about with like the twists and factions next time but oh yeah yeah but i do agree that i'd like to flesh it out a bit more and like figure out mm. why are certain teens chosen for this role rather than the actual fighting role and so on mm. one thing that makes me think of it which again we can deal with when we deal with factions but um it almost makes me think perhaps the child rearing isn't so much mother child relationship or the the preteens overseeing the children but in a military ranking because mm -hmm. i could see like the mother being like the i don't know the ranks of actual military but like <laughs> the, the captain and then like the the preteen is like the lieutenant but there's tension between them because um you know like one is a higher rank than the other and they have certain different levels of authority and one has technically has more power but he's not in charge like the preteen mm -hmm. is really in charge even though it, it understands the the lesser children, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If we, uh, if we also play with like gendered expectations as well, like there might be some kind of interesting stuff that we can do where like, mm -hmm. you know, like the girls are treated with more respect because of this ability to kind of like, again, if we're playing with traditional gender roles here. Right. And so mm -hmm. like, there's kind of an inverse of power. So like maybe girls are ranked higher than boys and so there's some resentment that's kind of built up there like there's some kind of i don't know i just think that there's some interesting stuff that we can kind of do with that if you're interested in exploring that it. might be kind of cool if what if like um the children are divorced of their genders deliberately and mm. the mothers the captains or the mothers they're called mothers but they could be any gender oh. and the ones that actually give birth are not even like important in the picture like they're just birthers oh you know? yeah. they're just booms yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, that's actually really interesting as well because it also suggests that like you effectively grow up and like choose your gender at some yeah point. that would be interesting mm -hmm. yeah that's interesting i like that yeah, yeah yeah that's cool okay that is cool yeah yeah hell yeah and i i also have been wondering like what are the implications for the actual birthing mother yeah. like yeah given that it sounds like you have this flood of magic that's coming mm. out of you like what does that do oh, to your body yeah. <laughs> yeah that's really dope and interesting and weird and i like it um I, I suppose we should talk a little bit more about the mothers next time right like i feel like there's mm -hmm. so much more that we can get into about like a literal like because what it also sounds like to me in some sense is that the mother is also partially responsible for that outpouring of magic and creation right in some sense but again yeah. i feel like we should put a pin in that and come back to it at another point at some point. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No, that works. Okay. Uh, Daniel, what was your second tenet, sir? Um, that the war has caused sterility for the most part, and um, people live longer, either as a consequence of the war or for whatever mm -hmm. reason. Mm -hmm. Hence the gerontocracy. <laughs> yeah. 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 That kind of came about after the fact, but yeah, that totally works. Yeah. And yeah, that, that has even more implications for the people who can still give birth, and yeah. like how they're treated and what effects that's having on their body as time goes on. Mm. I mean, there's also like this kind of forced conscription that I'm also yeah. seeing as well, where it's like you have to try and give birth as soon as possible, like a mixture between, you know, like a handmaid's tale and right. invincible, you know, at some point. I was thinking handmaid's tale as well. Similar yeah. vibe there. Yeah. 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 We're, again, if we're, well, oh, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot we can do with that. Um, okay. Cool. 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 Very happy with that. Daniel, are you feeling satisfied with that tenant and where it's place is right now? Yeah. I think it's just like flavor more than anything. Cool. Okay. Uh, the final tenant was mine, which is there is a council of ghosts that are behind the power and everything. 
and the way that that's developed is really fucking cool like we have like mm-hmm. ghost children lich things at this point that are like tachyonic crystals are involved and like that's all cool to me i'm i'm very happy with how that works out i think that you know obviously there's some development to be had there in terms of like what they want and who they're about and stuff like that but we can fucking deal with that later um so yeah are we at a good point? Do we have any other questions about the world that we absolutely need to answer before we move on? Um, none on my end, I think. I think it's mm. like a lot of stuff that there's just a lot of implications going on right now. And I'm curious to see how they develop next time. Yeah, there's there's so many implications. And I think what's going to help us with that implication is the twist, right? Uh, so Daniel, unless there's any questions that you have, I'm ready to move on to the twist itself. How about you? No, I think it'll get more fleshed out when we add other stuff. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. And our twist this time is. Okay. I mean, this is an interesting one. It says someone is manipulating everything from behind the scenes and it's not who you expect. Oh. Because we've got the ghost council, right? So, I mean, I imagine that this means that the ghost council yeah, are damn. just another layer in this onion, then, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, I feel like that's going to do it for now. That's a good twist that we can kind of try and reconcile next episode. So, yeah, that's going to do it for this episode of World Build with us. Remember that if you want us to build your world, like we did with Glue Axis today, you can always go to our website, worldbuildwithus.com, where you can click a link, follow the instructions, and within a reasonable amount of time, we'll be building your world. We're also on YouTube. If you want to go subscribe, click like, and some kind of a bell over there, you can do that. That'll that'll help us out quite a bit. Or really, if you just want to use it as an alternate method to listen to the podcast. We're on Twitter, at Let's World Build. We are also on Discord with the link for that in the description of this episode and on our website. We can come chat with us about all sorts of stuff, including uncovering the conspiracy that is the Gluax Courtney conundrum. Um, <laughs> speaking of Gluax, what I think our very first patron, if not one of our oldest patrons, but if you like Gluax, want to continue to support us in, in a financial sense, right? You can go to our Patreon where you'll get access to sweet, sweet goodies like two episodes per prompt instead of one, two hot for broadcast, the aphid lounge, and, uh, you know, a little patron only discord chat for us as well. Again, this is definitely if you're like, hey, you just want to say thank you for all the podcasts that we've created or, hey, I use this idea or this setting. Here's five bucks or two bucks is like a thank you. You know what? That's what we're all about. So Go on over to Patreon if you're interested. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's going to do it for this episode of World Build with us. Remember that we love you very much. We're going to get through this together until next week. 